Our ancestors looked to the natural world for guidance and wisdom. I've long been interested in mythology and folklore, where an animal may signal danger, serve as a guide, or protect from harm. These are but a few of my interpretations of these stories. I could have included the story of Elijah fed by ravens in the wilderness, of trickster coyote, of shapeshifters, so many more. In the biblical flood story, which echoes other traditions around the Near East, Noah wondered how much longer he'd have to stay in the ark. So he released two birds, a raven and a dove. The raven flew off and circled until the waters were dried from the land. Raven did not return. Dove, on the other hand, returned several times, finally with an olive branch in its beak, signaling that the land was dry enough for Noah to disembark. Compare this ancient story to a Viking tradition. Seafarers commonly took along caged ravens, which were released to help find land. If the raven saw only ocean, it circled back to the ship. If it did not return, the Vikings would sail after it, assuming it had spotted land. In Germanic and Norse mythology, Odin received news of happenings around the world from each of two ravens, Hugin, or thought, and Munin, mind, or memory. Thought is seen as action, while mind symbolizes meditation, bringing insight and deep vision. There are many traditions throughout Asia and North America which credit Raven with bringing light to a dark world. The details vary. In some tales, he brings the stars and moon as well. The frame is red alder, save from when I carved our front door in 1975. I followed this regal bird along the banks of the Kamagawa River in Kyoto. This painting is from one of my photos. In Greek mythology, Heron was the messenger of Athena and Aphrodite, and it is generally viewed as equally at home in land and in water. As for the gold leaf, I quote Rilke, No thing is too small for me to cherish and paint in gold, as if it were an icon that could bless us, though I'll not know who else among us will feel the blessing. The body is a scrap of pine given by a friend, the head, a juniper root from our land. The small, twisted wood is rosemary from my garden. The base, red alder scrap from the door I carved in 1975. This combination of materials is appropriate, as the heron was seen by the Celts as a shapeshifter. Heron is a symbol of stillness, patience, and deep meditation. Roofed with 80-year-old oak barrel staves, this small shrine celebrates water, which makes up most of the human body as well as our environment. A small piece of rosemary at the top represents a dragon, or water spirit, which is ubiquitous in ancient mythologies. I prefer to use found or scrap wood for sculpture. This piece of ponderosa was retrieved from a Colorado mountain road and given to me. As I cleaned it, it revealed itself to be a symbol of the unraveling of ecosystems brought on by a warming planet. Gaia rent asunder. My dream. I was working around the car in the driveway when a blue-gray cougar approached from the north. Couldn't tell if it was friendly or threatening. I scratched its head. It rubbed its head on my hand. It circled and watched. Then it bounded away, frightened off by a dark black bear. I quietly went inside the house and closed all of the doors. I woke up pondering the dream. Would our ancestors consider this a spirit vision? I'm still wondering. As a kid, my father kept homing pigeons. Winning an award as an eight-year-old at the county fair. He let me have bantams and parakeets, and he showed me how to teach the parakeet to talk. So naturally, at his memorial service, 
I volunteered to release a white homing pigeon. Feathers flew as the dove took flight from my hands, and I stooped to pick one up from the grass. Later, the funeral director came up and said, Did you see what happened? Most of the feathers went into your pocket. Sure enough, my pocket was full, as was my heart. I think of the feathers in this painting as symbols of hope and peace. One October, early in the morning, I watched thousands of monarch butterflies heading west along the coast of the Florida Panhandle. This incredible 3,000-mile journey is made by insects born to the north, creatures who know only by instinct that there will be, at the end, a place to rest and create the next generation. Across the top, the waves symbolize eternal waters, the world before the waters were separated. The lower band has images of broken shells found along the white sand beach, skeletons left behind as life moved on.